Ha! <laughs> you thought this was a video of a handicapped requirements for a handicapped bathroom. Well, guess what? Newsflash, this video is all about that. I'm just gonna explain some stuff. We've got a bathroom here and I wanted to show you this. They're thinking about upgrading this to a handicapped style bathroom. Now, the first thing you gotta have, you have to have a unisex sign or something on here. If you've got a bathroom for more than just men or women, you want both sexes in here, you got a sign up here that has a handicap sign and then you also have a sign that you have to put at five feet right here in Braille that says restroom. Okay, the other thing I see is there's a round doorknob on here. You gotta change that to a lever handle. Let's see what else we can find in this bathroom. Son of a gun, it is a bathroom. Okay, this looks large enough for clearances and all that kind of stuff. Okay, over here at the door, as you open the door, if the door opened the other way, you'd have to have 12 inch clearance over here with nothing in front of it. Well, in this case, we don't have to worry about that because the handle went in, so you push in, you're, you're good with that. Okay, the mirror has to be, from the ground up, has to be 40 inches, no higher than 40 inches up to the actual mirror. Okay, that's what handicap measurements are. This is California ADA, and I think that is for the whole United States. Check out your local area to see. Okay, now see this, this sink is not handicap accessible, is it? There's a cabinet underneath there, so you'd have to take the sink off, you'd have to take the cabinet off, you'd have to have a different type of sink right there that's mounted directly onto the wall so that a wheelchair can wheel underneath it. A faucet, you'd have to have a lever handle type faucet with two paddles, a paddle here and one here so that if you, you can't use your wrist and you just use your hand, you can do that. Or you can have a single, single lever that goes up or down, okay? But you can't have these, that's a no-no. As for your toilet, let's talk about the toilet a little bit here, shall we? Okay, you'll have to have a handicap style toilet. And this one happens to be a handicap, which means that it has to have an elongated front on it. The height has to be handicapped, which is a little bit higher than a standard toilet. And on an accessible ADA restroom, you wouldn't have this top lid here. You would have only a seat down here. Usually it's a split rim seat, which means it, it just goes to here and there, and you just flip that up or push it down, no, no um, seat cover, okay? As for the handle, this handle has to be on the open side of the bathroom. See here, that handle is set up correctly, it's a left hand handle. And if that toilet was on the opposite side of the room, and let's say the wide open area was on the right, you could not use this toilet, even if it was handicap accessible and everything, because the handle would have to be on the right hand side. And you can order, believe it or not, you can order those generally at most hardware stores or you may have to go to a plumbing wholesale outlet store or something like that to special order it. Most toilet handles are on the left hand side. Did you know that? Go look at your toilet and tell me where it is. Some have a button here, but most of them only are on the left. They're not on the right, but you can get one on the right. Okay, let's see what else we can find. You notice anything? The toilet paper, the toilet paper holder has to be mounted up on here and there's actual heights or whatever, it, it can't be up too high and usually for a handicapped toilet, lots of times they'll put a double one here, okay? What else does this bathroom not have? Think about it, okay? As I'm talking, think about what else you can, what else you'd have to have, okay? You'd also have to have a soap dispenser and usually a soap dispenser, usually I'll look, see I got a left hand wall here that's open, I got a right hand wall that's open. Usually I'll put that on the right side, right hand side, only because most people are right handed. And what you have to do is you have to measure that again. It has to be no higher than 40 inches. That's to the bottom of the soap dispenser. If you hit it here or if you push it here, that measurement can't be higher than 40 inches. Now see this, this uh, mirror, just for your sake of argument, it can't be higher than 40 inches. So if they wanted to use this mirror, they'd have to lower it down. Now the 40 inches, I believe has to be where the actual mirror is. So you wouldn't want to go 40 inches just to here because see, this, this frame is three and a half inches tall. So you'd have to have that down lower, okay? The other thing is you have to have a paper towel holder. So what I would do is I put it over here on this left-hand side or 
you know, you could put the paper towel holder here on the right, and then you could put the, uh, the soap dispenser over here on the left. But because this is the left-hand wall and stuff, it, it kind of keeps out of the way because it's going to stick out a little bit too, depending how close your sink is to the wall. If the sink was closer to the wall, maybe I'd put the, the paper towel holder to the right over here and I'd put the soap dispenser over here. But for the sake of argument, let's say you're going to put it here to the left. It's going to be no higher than 40 inches again. So you're going to measure up 40 inches. See, that's pretty low. Most places you'd stand there and say, oh, that's not, yeah, that's about right. Well, wrong. That's too high. It can't be higher than 40 inches. And that's where the paper comes out. Okay? If you have a handle on it, you've got to make sure you can reach your handle at 40 inches. If it comes out sideways and, and you just pull the paper out, that's got to be at 40 inches. So see, the sink height has to be handicap height too. Now this, this sink, I'm going to guess is probably too high. Now I'm not quite sure. I forget exactly what the measurement is, but they, they have a handicap handout that they'll give you, that they'll show you all about all the measurements and you have to have a certain measurement in front of the sink. You have to have a certain radius, five foot radius in here in the bathroom to make sure that a wheelchair can move around there. They also have it for restroom partitions. If you have a urinal, is there enough room, room here for a urinal? Well, maybe if you grab your uh, handicap handout that you can get from your state building department, your, building, your local building department, you can check that out. Here's another thing that you have to do. All uh, around the toilet, you have to have a washable surface. And, and believe it or not, they do not consider sheetrock as being a washable surface. Even if you have the sheetrock painted with semi-gloss paint. The, you know, if you went to the building department, you got a permit for this, and you wanted this all signed off, they're not going to allow this. So you got to know these things up front. You got to read the plans, make sure you understand what the requirements are when you get your permit, when, if, especially if you have an inspector come out or whatever. Make sure that you do this right because if you do everything and you install everything and you get the grab bars on there and you've got your floor done and your, your baseboard and all that and they come out here and you don't have paneling on here like Marlite paneling or FRP paneling which is you only have to come up 48 inches from the ground up 48 inches. Okay, you have to have that on this wall here, and you have to have it on your back wall beyond the toilet. Okay, so you don't have to you don't have to wrap uh, paneling all the way around this bathroom, let's say, and then say, oh my word, I've got to go over here, I've got to go behind the sink, I have to go over here on this other wall and behind this door. Geez, that sounds like a lot of work. How am I going to finish it up against this trim and all that? No, you don't have to. At least the last time I checked. You only have to do this side wall, you have to do this side wall, and if this wall was really super long, you only have to be out a certain amount in front of the toilet, okay? And on the side, like this side, you know, I would make it like, like three feet or so. Check your local ADA requirements on that, but you've got to have uh, washable Marlite paneling, it comes in four by eight sheets, that's considered washable and and per code. Also FRP, that's fiberglass reinforced paneling. It comes in four by eight sheets. It has a nice little trim on it. You glue it to the wall and all that. Here's another thing that you'd have to do. All that. Here's another thing that you'd have to do. Anytime you have baseboard inside a bathroom, like here, this is called four inch rubber base. It's with toe. See that little toe at the bottom? It kind of lifts out. That's called four inch rubber base with toe. Let's get you in there a little bit closer and tell you what that toe is. See? See that little bit of reveal that goes over the tile? That's called with toe. You can get that without toe for carpet sometimes, but that, you know, most people even put the toe with carpet because it's easier to vacuum. Well, in any case, in here you have, this has to be six inches tall. They do make a six inch rubber base, you know? So in here you'd have to take that off, put rubber base. Now here's another thing. Remember I was talking about grab bars? Grab bar backing. You also have, have to have grab bars on the wall and you can't just screw it into sheetrock. It's got to be screwed into the wall. The inspectors come here and they're, they're forcing themselves on here to see if it's going to loose, loosen up or anything because you get a lot of force here. If you're sitting on here and you're grabbing up on that, pushing yourself up or lifting yourself down or whatever, they want to make sure that those don't get loose. So 
In a case like this, you'd have to cut the sheetrock out because chances are you, you've only got studs every 16 inches or whatever. Chances are there's no plywood behind here so that you can screw the grab bar wherever. You can check that first. And then what I would do here is I would cut out for where the grab bars are going to be. And incidentally, on the grab bars, I happen to know a little bit more information about these grab bars. You take the front edge of the toilet, which is an elongated toilet. Has, the grab bar has to extend out this way at least two feet. Beyond that, what I do, and then it has to come back far enough. I think the minimum grab bar length there is 42 inches, but if you have a long enough area, you can go 40, 48 inches if you want. They sell grab bars four feet long, 42 inches, 36 inches, 32 inches, 30 inches, whatever. But on the side, you know that one's got to be a minimum 42 inches. So, so you'd measure two feet out in front of there. No, okay, that's where I need grab bar back in and measure from there back 42 inches or 48 inches. Put grab bar back in there. You can cut the sheetrock out, put a two by six flat in there, put the same piece of sheetrock back in there. You can tape it. Let's say, and that's it. And then when you put your finished paneling over here, your FRP or your Marlite paneling, that's going to cover all that, right? Do the same thing on this back wall. The minimum on the back wall is 36 inches. Yes, I believe it's 36 inches. You do the same thing, and then you can you can split the difference. Find out if it's 36. It could be 32 inch minimum. I'm not quite sure. Now I have not done a handicapped bathroom in years. But I wanted to show you some certain things that you will know up front and be aware of before you start thinking you're going to spend some money and upgrade your, your commercial bathroom or your church bathroom or whatever to a handicapped accessible bathroom. Even, even in a residence, if you want to know where your grab bars go, maybe you don't want to pull, pull everything off. Well, that's okay. You know, if you're just doing that for yourself and if you can't, if you don't want to pull the wall all apart, and patch it and tape top texture, prime it, paint it because you're not going to put any paneling up here. Let's say you can get a grab bar that that has um, little attachments on the back that um, you can attach to the sheetrock. That's a separate type of, of grab bar. You don't just screw it right into the sheetrock. It's got actual backing there uh, with little sheetrock connectors and all that kind of stuff. So take a look at that at your at your local hardware store, most of the time they'll have grab bars. And what is the height of the grab bar? Last time I checked, it was between 33 and 34 inches to the center of the grab bar. Okay, I used to make mine about, you know, a little bit over 33 inches, you know, maybe 30, 33 and a quarter or so. But it, if you feel more comfortable with 34 inches, know that you can get it by between 33 and 34 inches on the wall. Okay, you also have to have a washable surface on your floor. And you know, this one happens to have VCT, vinyl composition tile, composite tile, VCT flooring. They will accept that in most areas. They will accept that as a washable surface, even though that you have joints on the floor, okay? You have to use a commercial linoleum. Well, a commercial linoleum lasts longer. Uh, it's more difficult to install, depending. It, most of those come only five foot wide, so if your bathroom's further, you know you're gonna have to have a seam in it somewhere and all that kind of good stuff, okay? So there's just a few tips for who? For you, that's who. Now, if you don't know all the requirements, go to your local building department, ask them for an ADA accessible handicap drawing, tell them what you got, maybe take them a picture or something, and they'll help you kind of decide what you're up against, the, the measurements, the, and anything you happen to have questions about. If you don't know all about this, at least get your ADA compliant sheets, talk to the building department a little bit, and then go home, do a little bit of homework, measure some stuff. If you have to, contact uh, the inspector who you talk to, get their building, um, their, their business card, talk to them over the phone or go back, show them a little drawing of what you have going on and they'll help you further, okay? Hey, choice is all about choices and that's what this video is all about. Well, that's all I got for this time, but I'll be back with more videos.